Good afternoon, men and brethren. Today, on this beautiful, icy day, you can't see outside, but it is icing bad. We've already got about an eighth of an inch, and it keeps coming down. Good day to be out in the shop, doing shop-type things. Elijah has painted a bunch of cars and strung a mess out all over everything. He is a spray paint bandito. So daddy is building an old 700R4 to go in our new S10 pick -em up truck. So I'm not going to go over building the uh, building clutches and all of that. There's a thousand YouTube videos on it. What this YouTube video is about is don't be scared. So right here is the old valve body out of that old transmission. This is an 88 model 700R4 uh, 4L60. So what you really need more than anything when you're building a transmission is the books. These are not expensive. Buy the stupid book. Buy the regular ATSG manual. Buy the update manual. Read through the whole book two or three times before you ever even start. And if you're really unsure about yourself, find a core transmission and take it apart and put it together a few times. Now, the valve body is where everybody gets absolutely terrified because of all the worm tracks and all the fiddly little fiddly bits. So this board, I built this, I don't know, six, ten years ago when I did my first transmission. And all it's all it's there for is to hold all of your all of your valve spools in the correct orientation so that you don't mix springs up. So what I do is when I'm tearing these apart, I'll and it's marked here on the board, the manual valve, which is this train here, goes that way and the worm tracks up. That way it's it's in the same orientation every time. Now this board has a hole right here for driving out your roll pins. Actually, you drive them out that way on this valve body. But it has a hole to drive your roll pins out in. And everything is contained. So I tear the valve body down, put all of my valves in their appropriate slots as it is like if the valve body was sitting in the middle. That's how this works. Roll pin on the outside, then the spring, and then, you know, whatever do, do rally there is that goes in there. So, when I tear this down, everything goes in here, and then one valve at a time, I pull them out, set them to the side in the correct order, wipe the little slot out with a nice rag soaked in uh, kerosene, set them out here to the side, wipe the thing out, and then wash the dirty parts and put them back in the divider where it goes. And I do that for every spool and every valve. Now reassembly is just as easy. You take your, take your valve. I'm going to leave the manual valve out because it'll fall out. And you double check and make sure everything is clean. Now this one I'm going to have to go back over again. This, this transmission had some moisture down in it, and there was flash rust, and I guess I just didn't see that. But I'm going to go over that with some 4 or 600 grit and polish that up and get her spotless clean. So, but as you're assembling these, you, the way I do it, which is not the right way or the wrong way, it's just the way I do it. I put them in there dry to start with, and I make sure that it just flops in there dry and has free movement. And I do this one at a time. But if it's if it's got good free movement dry, then I put a little assembly goo, Dr. Tranny assembly goo. That's the brand that I've always used. And I also put a little glob of it in a skull can so I don't have the the big can open all the time but I'll put a little assembly glue on on everything and then assemble it 
one valve at a time. Now, a very, very important thing. Now, this is my homemade parts washer. There's, you can look through my videos. I think it's under a show and tell video where I built this, this parts washer out of crap that I tripped over. But the important part is I use $12 a gallon Jet A kerosene in this for uh, cleaning fluid. And you want to change your cleaning fluid often I don't, my, mine don't hold but more than a, about three quarts of, uh, of liquid. So you want to change it really, really often because it's quickly going to carry all of the oil that it can carry. And I like it to be good and clean. And you can see the rust chunks and the crud that I've washed out of things. And I keep the, I like using these white plastic wash tubs. They're laundry tubs. I, I like using them because you can see what's down in the bottom of them. Uh, and it just, it's easier to see trash against a white background. Now I do wear either Dr. Nefario gloves or some other kind of gloves to protect my hands from the kerosene. Uh, and this shop leaks like a, like a sieve, so I don't have to worry about fumes building up. Okay, back on... back on the valve body it is wildly important that these are clean everything has to be clean enough to stick in your eye so this valve body like I said this transmission had water in it at some point and you can still see just a little bit of rust stain here and there here in the worm tracks and there's some rust on the or rusting rust color None of this is loose. It won't flake off. It's just, it's just clean. But this had flaky rust all down inside of it. So what we did, we took dentist tooth or dentist picks, and picked it all of that rust, and then I put it in a pot of water, and covered it in water, and put it on the stove, and I boiled it for about a half an hour, and that's really it's an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, it gets you about the same thing. All that rust will blow off of the casting. And when it's done, you know, once you're satisfied you've got all the rust boiled out of it, take it, take it out of the water, bring it out to the shop, and blow it dry immediately. Get it immediately dried off, and then immediately wash it in your parts washer. Because your parts washer, even if you've got pretty good new clean goop in your parts washer there is some oil that's dissolved in it so that'll keep it from flash rusting because you do not want this sucker to flash rust i promise you that so uh, another thing that i like to do is i will take my valve body breakdown on my atsg manual and i will make a photocopy of it uh, so that I'm not handling my book with goop on my fingers because you're going to have assembly goo, you're going to have transmission fluid. Make a photocopy so that you don't do this here and get fingerprints on your book. So before I start reassembling this, I am going to orient my ATSG page in the same orientation as my valve train. And I'm going to double check that every valve, every spring, every everything is in the correct order and assembled right. So that it's all laid out. And I'm going to double check this, triple check it, quadruple check it. I'm going to go over and over and over it until I'm satisfied that nothing is amiss. Uh, honestly, these will not go back together wrong, usually, unless they do. So just keep that in mind. You can't screw it up unless you do. The one of the things that I that you really have to pay particular attention about is the insides of your springs. And it seems like the finer the spring, the dirtier it is inside. So get you some brushes. I think these came from Harbor Freight. They're just cheap uh, bore brushes. 
and run a bore brush through them in your solvent tank, of course. But run a bore brush through them, and I like to use microfiber rags. Uh, you can steal them from your wife, but use microfiber rags and wash everything with microfiber rags, bore brushes. It's got to be clean enough to stick in your eye. If it's not, clean it cleaner. Uh, and on these smaller springs, like this little light duty spring here, when you run your bore brush through there, push the spring over the bore brush. Don't get a hold of it and try to pull it over the bore, bore brush or you'll stretch it. Push the spring over the brush and you'll be just fine. It won't hurt the spring. And while you've got them out, examine them. Make sure there's no worn spots like sometimes these springs will have a like you can see some shiny right there but that's okay they may get a flat spot worn on one side of them where that spring is almost to break you don't want that all of these parts are available if you know where to get them and if you don't know where to get them just start asking questions somebody will know where to get them uh, but that's all i have about that uh, i hope this helps somebody out don't be scared to tear stuff apart. There's always the first time. Just like everything else, you're nervous as heck for the first time. But when it's over, you will have some disappointment. But, you know, you've got the first one down. And once you get the first one down, the second one's a whole lot easier. So, if you all have any questions, ask them in the comments. In the meanwhile, you all drive safe, watch for deer and stay off the icy, nasty roads.